Hey guys, welcome back to All in All Law. This is a medical video lecture surgery. And today we're going to talk about perforation of the esophagus. Perforation of the esophagus. So, what are the causes for perforation of the esophagus? Remember, for your simile and for what you call for your clinical practice, the most common cause being uh, it's atrogenic. Okay, because atrogenic like instrumentation, what we are talking about is esophagoscopy or dilatation procedures okay and this accounts for 50% of total what you call esophageal perforation uh, that's why in USMLE or any other medical board examination if you want to diagnose esophagus disease just try to look for these points that the patient had undergone what you call esophagoscopy or a dilatation or some instrumentation into the esophagus or into the stomach okay and after that he has presented with the sign and symptoms of esophagus perforation then you can think of this what you call uh, esophag perforation of the esophagus right but not only the atrogenic there are other causes like a trauma whether it's a blunt trauma or what you call the perforating or penetrating trauma then we have another disease known as what you call bur burha Bearhaus syndrome. What's a Bearhaus syndrome? It's nothing but it's a perforation of the esophagus, but due to what you call continuous emesis or vomiting or throwing up. Okay, because of this, there is a rupture of what you call esophagus, and that results in perforation of esophagus. Okay, and another one thing: the rupture of esophagus. What happens when there is a rupture of esophagus? It leads to the what you call a uh, this whatever the content is there it splits into the what you call it, it goes and into the mediastinum causes acute mediastinitis okay if you do not treat the acute mediastinitis or perforation then it's going to be very fatal okay guys so let's talk how to diagnose diagnosis Patient usually gives a history of instrumentation of the esophagus or severe vomiting, just consider or a trauma, right? All patients with severe chest pain, which is usually most prominent in the area of what you call rapture, they will have very severe chest pain, okay, the side. Physical examination on examination, you see what you feel, crepitations, you hear crepitations in the neck resulting from a mediastinal air okay and what you call occasionally the crunching sound can be heard over the heart that is a Hammond sign Hammond sign crunching sound heard over the heart is known as a Hammond sign which is caused by air in the mediastinum behind the heart that's why you hear this sound okay and later rarely it can cause what you call septic shock okay guys septic shock right so these are the important what you call loss on physical examination findings let's talk about the chest x-ray if you take a chest x-ray it reveals the air in the mediastinum air in the mediastinum okay and this because of this there is a widening of the mediastinum okay and if the what you call perforation is in the lower esophagus the air may be present under the diaphragm okay within the what you call abdomen so remember it depends on the where the what you call the perforation is location of the perforation okay and if the pleura has been violated uh, hydro pneumothorax can be there right and if you take a barium swallow should be performed remember barium swallow should be performed if the perforation is suspected okay Right, and a CT scan is what you call very helpful in diagnosing this disease. So, 
what are the investigation you want to do chest x-ray barium cell and the cat scan okay guys uh, now regarding the treatment is what you call primary repair of the what you call it's a repair is nothing but it's a surgery right the repair with the tissue what you call a buttress reinforcement combined with the wide mediastinal and pleural drainage okay and if mediastinal inflammation is severe and the tissue integrity markedly is compromised then esophageal resection with cervical esophagostomy and the placement of gastrostomy tube are performed okay depending on the severity we can do all these things but this is not meant for what you call um, for your USMLE just try to remember if in mediastinal inflammation is very severe and tissue integrity is markedly compromised then esophageal resection with cervical esophagostomy and placement of a gastrostomy tube are performed okay guys so thank you so much for watching this video take care